started. This is such a mess. Jesus. Hola, hola, hola. Hello. 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 If you can tell, the background is different. Um, Five dollars at Target can get you a lot for a background change, and um, I sound a bit weird. This is the first time I'm actually filming when I'm sick. Um, came out of nowhere. It's just how sometimes my period works. I get like an a, just a terrible cold. It was so bad. My throat was bothering me. I couldn't like swallow for a while. So I can't really swallow. And then I decided while my period to go pop a pimple that I had found on my lip. So if, as you can see, we're gonna write nice and close. Don't look at my mustache, please. Um, there's a scab there, so we're just gonna back up because you can see my mustache again. So, so yes. Um, hello, welcome to the weirdest kingdom on this side of YouTube. I'm Princess Adia, aka Adia, and today. Um, today's video is a bit more of a, I guess you could say, um, informational video. I don't know. I'm not great when it comes to explaining things. I finally realize that. I'm really bad at explaining things. I either take too long and forget stuff and go off on a tangent or go too quick, forget stuff, and no one understands what I'm saying. Today's video, I will be talking to you um, about how to get into alternative fashion, kawaii fashion. As you can see, I'm not dressed quite normally for normal people. For me, it's quite normal. For other people, it's not. So, I would like to talk to people or newbies or just like, you know, the ones who have been into this fashion but just haven't started dressing this way because I think this video, I watched a video by Lady Martha Chan. I thought I would talk to you about it because I watched Pixie Locks, Lovely Lore, a whole bunch of people. Pixie Locks and Lovely Lore, most definitely, mainly people I watched before I even got into my fashion. Pixie Locks when she was in Lolita, and then she did the whole change, and I think I also went through the change of like, I like Lolita, but I don't ever see myself wearing it. One, it's too expensive. Two, well, for me at the moment, I was in seventh grade, but um, it was too expensive, and I was like, I like more casual things. I don't think I could also always do that, but then Lovely Laura's going that. I don't wear Lolita all the time. So, like, I went through the change. There's a lot of hand motions going on. Hello? Um, I went through the change, and so it was, like, more of, like, a silent change. We fast forward to now. Or for a few years. I was in and out of the fashion. I tried as much as I possibly could. Again, let me remind you, I never dressed the way the mainstream people did. I was had a little bit of flack for that. One, I was in dance. So I was never actually fully... Rarely was I ever actually fully wearing clothes that people would wear outside. I had went to school with uniform. And then I always went dance. And then I went to church. And then I dressed like a suburban mother. Like, again, why I'm using Pinterest. Um, not knocking Pinterest, because I still use Pinterest to this day. Follow me on Pinterest. Um, but, um, essentially it took a long time, one, because I was scared. I had never seen anyone dress in the way, dress this way in around in New York City, which is surprising for New York City, because New York City is full of people who are very creative and weird and I just had never seen anyone dress like that. Yeah, the occasional like colored hair person, stuff like that. Two, um, I was in a community that was like, if you did stuff that was not like, if you did some things that were out of the norm, still in that community, you were kind of like made, you were the butt of the joke and I ended up having to be the butt of the joke a lot of the times because I didn't dress conventionally. Um, Three, I had a lot of pushback from family members, and at the time I was like, family was like the all my all, it was that in church, and so I literally had my two communities, and also school, and I went to an all-girls school, which is made it even worse, and so it just made it hard. Not saying, I'm saying that this is, saying this to say because this is probably a situation that most people who are into this fashion are going to have to deal with. 
mind you, while there's still there are more people out and about stuff like that, we can get more through Instagram stuff like that. I was not heavy into the Instagram life. I did not know how to work Instagram when I was in middle school. I had Instagram from fifth grade. I thought it was something totally different than it actually is. So, here's my one tip. I would say, one, slowly build up your wardrobe. That sounds like a bit of a, okay, what does that mean? So that means like buying little pieces and stuff like that. Maybe I'm buying a whole like fully wardrobe because you can't do that because one, with this fashion sometimes can come a very hefty price. I'm not saying like selling your soul to the devil, all that kind of stuff. I'm saying hefty prices and like a large price tag. And yes, there are places you can go to Forever 21 because those are places. But if you're someone who likes to do sustainability and supporting rights of people who who undocumented work and stuff like that, Forever 21 may not maybe be your best bet. It depends on what your morals are and stuff like that. I don't talk about Forever 21 as much anymore because one. They just don't have things that all the time. Like it's very rare that I find things that I like. I go during springtime. Springtime, I will say, you want to find clothes that you can find and you can wear for your for kawaii fashion, alternative fashion, whatever. Go during springtime. Why do I say this? Because summer. Lots of reds, lots of blues. If you want to add some spiciness into your wardrobe and add like a nice red fire truck red in there, go ahead. No one's knocking you. That's one thing about the fashion. It's all to your liking of what you like. But other than fall, winter, and you know, summer, a lot of the clothes are a lot of like dark colors, especially fall. I hate going shopping during fall in like those conventional places because they're such a drag. There's so many dark colors in there. And so that's, that's why. But, um, so I like to find places. Some places I like to shop are Dolls Kill for one, even though there's some things about Dolls Kill, I think you can, if you can get past those, because one, I, I don't know, I just, I don't know, but, um, Dolls Kill, for 21 if you want, during springtime, um, Lazy Oaf, but Lazy Oaf is on Dolls Kill, so let me put that there, um, Lazy Oaf, Hot Topic, ASOS, you can even check out WC, you get shipping services and stuff like that. So there are accessibilities to getting stuff from Japan directly, shipping services. So slowly build up your wardrobe as, if you can. Two is actually starting to dress in the fashion. If you start dressing in the fashion, I would say what I started to do was slowly like add small things into it. If you slowly incorporate these things, like going Hot Topic, Hot Topic is the best way, I think, to slowly incorporate things because you can still get some graphic tees if you want, but you can also get some like pastel stuff, some nerd culture, like all wrapped into one. If you want, start with accessories. Accessories is how I started. I have a whole drawer full of bows. Accessories can help, whether it be earrings, um, pins, enamel pins, um, belts, shoes, bags, and hair accessories. Those things can help you slowly get into those things. Say one, if you want to dress like this, start walking around your house just like this. If you want, I started wearing things that I liked, like certain out pieces, stuff like that, outfits around the house, or to like the corner store, stuff like that, like to the bodega, stuff like that. So it was very easy for me to transition to going to a small place like Family Dollar or at the bodega, because we're right there. And then going out was like, oh, I already ventured outside. I feel very comfortable. It can be a little bit scary. So I would say take it time after time going to small places. I went from the bodega to the post office and to the post office to school. 
Mind you, my school and the, and the post office and the bodega are like 14, 15 miles from each other, but I digress. You get what I mean. If you can and you have the possibility, I did not. This is for an alternative thing of wearing it actually outside. Um, wearing it with a group of friends or wearing it with your friends just in general. Sometimes, while there's this quote that says, we're good on our own, but we're great together. I think that holds a lot of holds a lot when you're talking about wearing alternative fashion because when you're with groups of friends, especially friends that are not going to judge you, make you feel uncomfortable, you can feel like you're not even wearing these clothes at all. I think it's a very, very strong thing to do is wearing it with your friends. And then after all, your friends, you've already worn it outside shopping, whatever, you automatically feel like I can do this by myself. This goes on the other side, flip side. You have to make sure you feel comfortable in what you're wearing as well. This fashion is very much OTT, like over the top. Like this is very normal for me, but for someone that's like dressing up and stuff like that. What you're comfortable with, say you don't want to wear a fully sequenced bottom. I would, but you wouldn't, so that's okay. But you'd like rather be okay with like a nice like sequenced crop top. It's not as flashy, there's like a little bit of words are sequenced, and it's like a pastel -y kind of thing. Totally okay with like a pink skirt. Totally okay. Again, this fashion is most definitely fully of what you like and what you feel comfortable in. We have, while you may have inspirations of people on Instagram, like that, people wearing this fashion, you don't have to follow everything they're wearing because one, you may not necessarily like how they've styled something by the same pieces, may not like how they've styled that. But I'd rather style it like this. This is all what this fashion is about. This fashion is about wearing what you feel comfortable in, but also dressing however you want and dressing out of the norm. Now, I will say this. With this fashion comes a lot of talk from other people. If you know groups of groups of people that are particularly critis like to criticize, this is how I would say to deal with it. Um, I, for one, go to church. I'm not really who I want to, but I go to church. I personally identify as agnostic, but my mother identifies as Christian and she would like for me to go to church and she also wants me to be involved in church. So I do that because she wants me to. But when I turn 18, I will no longer do that. Not really important, like it's kind of important, but you get, you're going to get what I'm saying when I say this. Growing up in uh, the church and growing up Christian, it's quite a judgmental community. I feel like if you are in some sort of religion that's not like frilly loose and stuff like that or some sort of community that's like, yeah, I understand what you mean, you know that certain groups of people are very judgmental and they don't like things that don't make sense to them. And that's what happened when I first wore Lolita outside and I got a lot of comments from younger people of my age, older people's like, what is she doing? Why is she wearing like that? Like I got like a lot of jokes, people thought I was funny, I was made, made, I was made fun of, essentially. Um, so, it's very hard sometimes, and thank God I know how to ignore people and know how to just stay, in my, stay to myself. I'm not saying you should do that, but me as a person, I'm like, I don't want to deal with people's BS. And judgment so I'm gonna stay over there that's just like how I work but that doesn't have mean how you have to work essentially what I'm saying is you have to figure out a way to block out the people that don't understand this that are gonna make judgments or gonna say something about your you know thing because I went I I attended a church for a long majority of my life that I've been alive for um, there was already a notion of who I was and what I dressed like and so people were like okay that's a dia blah blah and 
I always did little things like color my hair or if I had my hair in braids and extensions I had like little colored had color braids in and then there'd be people who like oh now I want to do that now so that was like I was a little bit of like not a trendsetter but I did sh do things that people wanted to do after me um but the first time I completely dressed alternatively was probably one of the scariest moments in my life I would say um it gets quite serious because I'm very much of a person like in my head I'm like oh god oh my god oh my gosh should I do this should I do this every day before I walk out the door wearing dressing alternatively I am faced with oh my god should I do this should I do this should I do this when I first started wearing dressing like this and I was like I can why should why why am I doing this myself I can always just turn back and put on jeans and a graphic tee and I'll still feel fine and it wasn't okay because I had people going around like oh idea blah blah almost like it just essentially just being the butt of the joke and it wasn't funny it wasn't fun and it wasn't a nice feeling to have feeling like that no matter where I was going I knew I was going to be the butt of the joke and so I was like I'm just going to stop doing that kind of thing which leads to conformity and I'm not one for like oh conform be like everybody else I am like totally against conformity because it's just people don't get to be who they want to be truly and then it's not a great thing like I truly wasn't being myself dressing in jeans and a graphic tee that was my status because I was like I've been doing that for a while and that was easy but it wasn't who I was I didn't feel comfortable I felt more insecure wearing graphic tees and jeans than I did than I than I do wearing kawaii fashion alternative fashion and I knew that I had to face the hard whole truth that if I generally wanted to feel good about myself and feel good about my body and feel like myself I was going to have to wear what I wanted to wear and not to the people well to a lot of people I've seen like um a, I don't take BS from people I'm my own person I'm a leader blah blah that's what I put out there and it and it's generally like yeah it's somewhat some of that is true I am like my own person I don't follow people like that um I'm okay with not doing things people don't like or people don't want me to do that people may upset someone I'm totally okay with doing that because it's your life and it's generally your life because this benefits you wholeheartedly at the end of the day and so when I did wear this this is when I got my I had gotten my first baby star to shine bright whole outfit so I wore my blouse my skirt my socks and my jelly platforms which I had loved because I prepared pair of shoes ever my girl bought them for me and they're just like I was like I feel the best I have ever felt ever wearing this with my headpiece everything it wasn't the best outfit let me let me say that it wasn't the most creative outfit at the moment I had seen better cords and stuff like that but I was like I feel like myself and I was like I love dressing like this this is I'm going to do this for the rest of my life my main let me change sometime on which I've had um but I knew I was never going to dress conventionally ever again. I was never going back to jeans and t-shirts. I was never going back to like a blouse and a, and a skirt. I was just never going to do that again. And so the day that came when I did wear that outside, I was scared. And it was like that moment, you know, when you walk into a, a classroom late and everyone starts to you and you walk, or you walk into school and you know, like you for the first time you get your whole like makeup done and everything like that and everyone's staring at you. That's exactly what I had when I walked into that restaurant that day after a church sermon. I didn't go to church that day. I remember walking in because it was my mom's choir walking in. And everyone's head turned. And they stared at me as I walked in. And I don't know why, but I felt like no one's staring at me. Like, I just felt I ignored it more off. 
And then I heard the, the voices and the names and all that kind of stuff. And then that came, was a little bit more daunting than the stairs because I'm very good at ignoring stairs because I'm always late someplace. I'm always getting stairs somewhere. And so um, that was a lot easier. But then hearing all the jokes, especially when people don't know how to be quiet or not quiet people. Um, it's just a lot of like loud people making jokes. It's kind of hard to ignore that, especially when you have your brain literally cannot focus on one thing sometimes. So it's hard to not focus on that loud person laughing, making jokes about you and how you look silly and who let you out of the house like that and all that kind of stuff like that. And so it's very hard to listen to stuff like, to ignore stuff like that. And, but it was like, in my head, I was like, those people don't, don't matter, they don't matter, they don't matter because you genuinely feel good. You genuinely, this is like, this is you, like. There's just, this is no like trying to be you. This is most definitely you. Like, you never have felt this much like you in your whole entire life before. And you're not lying. You're not making a facade, which I had been doing for a very long time. And, well, this is the only time, well, the first time I'd ever worn a tighter fashion that I had next day, I had to wear a bag and uniform, and I still had to wear jeans and stuff like that. I would never forget that feeling of dressing alternatively for the first time. And even today, when I still, while well, I'm still into my alternative fashion and foreign and still growing my, my, my wardrobe and growing my style, I do get a lot of pushback because people don't like how I dress. I've gotten comments of like, I would never walk in the shoe with you like that. I mean, today, generally, I got a comment from from someone close to me, and they were like, you're making it very hard for me to be able to walk in the shoe with you. And it's comments like those that like, one, hurt, but two, also solidify the fact of like, when people don't understand things, people don't agree with something, all that we're going to do is just make fun of you and I always hear the comment of like oh they're making fun of you because they're jealous it's not jealous I hate when people think it's jealousy there's nothing to be jealous of about me to be honest I mean that's just me being self-deprecating but there's nothing up to me, me to be jealous of but it's like when people don't understand things they have something to say and again this is going back to like when you dress this way, there's a whole lot coming at you than more just dress and dressing this way. If you have a very accepting family, very accepting community around you, I am so happy for you. But for the case of like for some people, that always isn't the truth. And this makes it like seem like I'm like people are coming out like it's like all that kind of stuff. And it generally is just people dressing the way they want. And if something as simple as that shows that there's more of the problems. There are less problems in the world than me dressing. A little bit weird and wearing bright colors every day and still looking like a little kid but when you hear comments of like I can't even walk on the street with you oh how about you cross the street and then maybe we can go out places together or they walk up a little bit ahead of you every time they're outside with someone with them okay they don't particularly like your outfit it's it's hurtful but it's also why it's like that's their most definitely their opinion. So I'm wear this and I'm watching a Disney movie and I got like a makeup on and look like, you know, my all of my paraphernalia and my whole apparatus. I'm like, oh gosh. I'm like and me. Like this whole situation is me right now. There's always some sort of way to get this. Again, like I said before, it's very cost heavy. So some of the things I like to do are one, save up. Two, learn when releases are coming so you can save up. Follow all these places that you like online. Dolls Kill, Lazy Elf, ASOS, or like brands like Sister Jane. I'm getting into Sister Jane. Like, follow those brands. They tell, they talk about their releases on social media. Follow other kawaii influencers, other like people that you like. Grow a community and 
just go ahead, fly from the nest, be gone, grow, fly a little birdie, and like go in the world and spread this fashion, spread this culture, this subculture out into the world because there's nothing better than a little bit of kawaii everywhere if you get what I'm saying. I like to use afterpay because, especially on dolls kill and like urban outfitters because one, I don't have a job. I'm trying to get a job. I don't have a job. And this isn't my f job yet. As much as I'd like it to be, it isn't my job yet. I don't get any money from this. Um, so after pay and stuff like that, those make it a lot easier to pay for things than it would saying buy it in full. But I got a, I got a lazy old bathing suit for the first time. Close to about a hundred dollars for all the both pieces together with ship without shipping. But I was able to get that and pay it off like in a good amount with afterpay. So if I can remember, I'll leave some links down to the things I've talked about lazy elf dolls kill, all this kind of stuff, and afterpay and all that. Just because because it's actually very there's a lot of it's very much in with a whole bunch of other companies and stuff, like store and stuff like that so um there are some other like silo side brands that i like to look at and stuff like that so i don't know i'm gonna leave that all down in the link down in the description down below if i remember we'll see if i'm up to the challenge if i don't feel lazy in the video i hope this video was in Formative. It helped you. It was entertaining in some sort of way. I hope I've edit edited it into some sort of video that makes sense and that's good enough. But um, let's talk about some future videos that are coming out soon. As you know, if you do watch Riverdale, Riverdale season three just ended and it's out on Netflix right now. So within like the week or two, I will be putting out my Riverdale video about season three. I'm have to watch it all over again purely for information and for for research. I really could not forget that word last night, and I was like talking to my mom like, "What is the word?" She's like, "Understand?" I'm like, "No, not understanding." Research for purely for research and for information reasons. I need to inform you guys on what happened because man I was looking back on some episodes like Jesus that happened I don't even remember that happening because there's so much crap that happened during season 3 so that um I am gonna go see Dumbo in movie theaters even though it's really late I'm gonna go see Dumbo and as much as I love Disney I don't like Aladdin and I'm gonna go see it because Kelly Eden was talking about it on her Instagram stories and I want to see because as much as I'm a, don't like a lot in the animated version and this one because there's some things I have to say about this movie so I'm gonna go see it I'm gonna go talk I'm gonna write down notes <laughs> while I'm watching the movie and um because there are a lot of mixed reviews on this movie as there is on any movie that's come out um so, uh, I'm going to be fluttering around with my reviews, so I think the next few videos are going to be some reviews, and then I'm trying to come up with a video on a how to style video. This could help, could be like a two-parter, ne next part of this video, but we'll see. I have, I'm trying to do some like cool videoing things for it, so, dabbing a little bit of stop motion, so if you get what I mean, but yes. Um... Thank you for watching. Um, I hope to see you again in the next video. And please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you'd like to see. I feel like I got a lot of, oh, really deep in this video. So, thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.